Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're gonna talk about how to create a lobby system inside of Godot. So we're going to go through the process of building out our lobby interface. We're going to talk about how to create connections and create lobbies. We're gonna talk about how to actually join a lobby and list your lobbies. We're gonna talk about how to invite your friends. And finally, we're going to talk about how to leave your lobbies. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we have to talk about is some of the prerequisites to this tutorial. So. Previously, in the previous video, we built out all of these different options here. So we have like printing our friends, getting our achievements, setting our achievements, creating leaderboards and saving out to the cloud. So make sure that you have watched that tutorial or at least got through the first portion where I talk about how to actually set up your Steam integration and to build that Steam manager. Once you get past that part, the rest of it's kind of not useful um for the rest of this but for this specific tutorial you will need at least have built the uh, steam manager uh, cs file so as long as you have that you should be good to go something else that's going to be a prerequisite to this is you will need a second machine with a second steam account and i know that that's awful and i know that that's terrible um, but if you're going to test this, you will need a second steam account to test this, or you could of course have your friend help you out if you don't mind, but it is something that, um, we will need to cross at some point in time. So with that being said, let's first build out a new scene. And the reason why is I just don't really want to mess with the scene because we already have some stuff here. So let's actually just build a new scene. So we'll go scene, new scene. And then we'll make that a 2D scene. And that'll just give us a clean slate to play around with since this is a new tutorial. And I don't want to, uh, you know, mix and match stuff from previous tutorials. So first thing that we're going to build is the ability to create and uh, refresh our lobbies, okay? And, and of course, we're gonna be able to leave lobbies as well. So one of the big things about steam and steam works is that they offer the ability to use their own backbone for a lot of your networking uh, capabilities and it's all baked into the cake of your uh, 30 percent that steam takes so if your game is multiplayer it really is beneficial if it's on steam to use their backbone and you have to have your game out on steam to use the backbone and every user will need a steam user count to actually get that benefit so don't um you know if you have a mobile game or something you can't use the steam backend so that's something to keep in mind now first let's open up the steam manager and so I'm going to go into my main scene I have my steam manager here if I remember correctly so we'll just drag that up from Steam, Steam Manager into our Node2D, and let's open that up real quick. Now, if you remember, we went through and we initialized our Steam um, code here, and we actually initialized everything and set everything up and, and made it so that we could at least work with the basics that is Steam, right? We could connect and we could, you know, pull back some basic information. Outside of that, we basically just did a run callback, and then we have a notification to close down Steam when it is uh, done, right? So when we close our game, it actually closes the game. First, since we're going to be doing um, some lobby code, we're going to need to set up some signals here. So we're gonna come into our ready and we're gonna say steam matchmaking dot on lobby game created plus equals and we'll just basically take this little bit here and then just say on lobby game created callback and that's going to give us a callback that we can use to um call when that signal gets fired now i know what you're thinking well hold on a minute mitch um we're not using godot signals and that's one of the big things that i think is really cool um with c sharp is c sharp actually has its own event system Unlike um, GDScript, where you have to use the Godot signal system, 
with C sharp, you actually have the C sharp signal system. And in general, at least in, in my testing, it's a little bit faster and it's a little bit more efficient and you can do a lot more with it because it, it's tightly integrated into the C sharp system framework. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to start running through these guys and uh, we'll build out all of our functions after that. So we'll say steam matchmaking dot on lobby created plus equals on lobby created callback. So we'll just grab that and then we'll grab the next one, steam matchmaking dot on lobby member joined plus equals. And I'll just grab this just like we've been doing. So grab that. Steam matchmaking dot on on lobby member disconnected plus equals on lobby disconnected callback. And then we basically have one more, which is on member leave. So steam matchmaking dot on lobby member leave. And there's a lot of these. You can see there's actually a lot of them. So data change, disconnected, join, kick to leave. So you can actually do custom things. If a member gets banned, you could actually have a custom thing, like a banner that shows up saying this person got banned, right? So you can get a lot of really cool stuff, but in our case, we're just making a very basic system. So I don't really want to subscribe to those events, but we can just grab this and do our callback and we'll be back up here. Um, there's additional callbacks that I want to, uh, subscribe to later, but for right now, this should be good enough. Now, first let's do our on lobby disconnected. So we can just kind of say, Hey, when the user leaves, we're good to go. So private void on lobby member disconnected callback, just like that. And we will tell it to basically say, Hey, somebody's left the lobby. So we'll just say GD dot print user has left lobby and something that you'll notice is we have a squiggly line down here, right? Where it's, it's saying, Hey, there's something wrong here. And you'll see that it says, Hey, there's no overload that matches delegate action lobby friend. Okay. And one of the things that's really cool about signals is that it tells you, Hey, this doesn't quite work. You can also see that it takes in a lobby and a friend. Okay. So you can come in here and say lobby, lobby comma friend, friend like that. And you'll see that suddenly lobby doesn't exist. And that's because there, it's not part of the namespace that we have, um, here, right? So we need to actually use that namespace. So if we come over here, click on this guy and say, using Steamworks data, that'll solve that problem right there. And you'll notice that our little squiggly line has gone away. So we could say user has left lobby colon space plus friend dot, and we'll just say friend dot name. And that'll say this person has left the lobby. So that'll basically cover when a user disconnects. So now let's do the same thing, but when a member leaves as well. So the difference between a disconnect and a leave is if the user clicks the leave button, they have left. If the member disconnects, it's because they have disconnected. They've lost network and suddenly have gotten disconnected. So we'll come in here and say private void on lobby member disconnected. And it's going to take in the same stuff. So lobby, lobby and friend right here. So we'll just paste that guy in there and go ahead and do that. And basically we can just grab this, paste it and say user has disconnected from lobby and we'll pass in our friend name. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, we should probably take this on member disconnected since I already technically have it here. We should probably do it on member leave instead and then grab our have left and then has disconnected and that would probably be better off than what we had so that should work now we got to grab our on member um or on lobby created and on lobby 
game created and on mob lobby member joined. So we'll do that real quick. So private void, and then we'll just grab that guy, paste him. And I believe he gets an action lobby friend. So we'll do the same thing because that's the member joined. So we'll do that. GD dot print user has joined the lobby colon space uh, plus friend dot name. And that's just going to pull back their name like everyone else. And then we'll go ahead and do the same with the other two private void on lobby created callback. We'll grab that real quick. And that takes in a result and it takes in a lobby just like that. And what this callback is used for is it allows us to say, Hey, when a lobby is created, was it successful? Was it actually good to go? Are, are we happy with what we have? So what we can say is if result is not equal to result dot okay then we can go ahead and say gd dot print lobby creation result was not okay just like that and then we can just say else gd dot print created lobby exclamation point and that will give us a lobby that we can have um and if we wanted to, we could actually pull back our name. So we could actually come in here and say dollar sign created lobby ID is equal to bracket bracket lobby dot. And then we could actually pull in its ID as well if we wanted to, just to kind of make it a little bit more fancy there. And the last one that we got to do is our on lobby game created. So we'll say private void on lobby game created callback and this one takes in a action lobby you int you short and steam id and it's basically just when a game is created it comes with the lobby that it was created in it comes with the you int of an id it gives you a u short which is the port and it gives you the Steam ID of the actual game that's created. Now, we're probably not gonna do too much in here, but you could have a call back here. When this game is created, you could say, hey, I'm good to go and I can fire off my scene, right? You could actually load a scene or load a level. Now, in our case, we're not gonna be doing that, but you could do that. So we'll put quote firing callback for on for lobby game created. So now that we have all of these um, callbacks created, we need to uh, set up our Steam Socket Manager and our Steam Connection Manager. So our Steam Connection Manager is our manager that basically handles all of our connections. And I know that that doesn't seem very exciting, but it's really useful. And for the most part, we're not going to be doing anything in it, but we need to have an overrided connection manager. And we need to do the same thing with a socket manager. Basically, we're going to override both of them so we can override their on message and go from there. So what we'll do is we'll come over to our Steam section. We're going to right click, edit a new file and just call it Steam Connection Manager. Dot CS, and that will give us a nice CS file here. Now, what we need is we need to have we need to have our using statement. So we'll say using Steamworks, using Steamworks.data, because we're going to need Steamworks data. We're going to need to use system and we're going to need to use Godot. Next, we'll add our uh, class here. So we'll say public. Class Steam Connection Manager, and it inherits from the Connection Manager. Okay, and that's going to give us the ability to override a lot of these, um, you know, connections that they have. 
So first, let's override the unconnected. So we'll say public override. And you'll see we got a bunch of options here. We'll do unconnected. And then we're going to override. And we'll override on connecting next. And then we're going to do the same thing, public override, and we're going to override disconnected. And last but not least, I'm going to override on message. And that's going to give us a lot of information right here. You can see on message, we have an inner pointer data size, long message number, long receive time an int channel. So that's really cool. Now what we'll do is we'll just GD. We'll just come in here and GD dot print. Got a message. Yay. Right. We have a message on disconnected. We'll just GD dot print and we'll say on disconnection. We'll grab this paste and paste and we'll say on connection up here and on connecting here. There we go. Now, basically this is going to serve as our connection manager. So whenever we connect or disconnect to a server, these callbacks are going to fire off. And then I know you're, you might be thinking, well, but we also have our Steam manager, right? And our Steam manager has these lobby stuff, but this is only for lobbies. This isn't for your actual game, not for your actual game play. This is for specifically just your lobby stuff. So that's what connection manager is for, is it's for handling all of your actual connection manager stuff. This on message will be when you're dur during gameplay, when I'm playing my game, this little guy here is going to be firing off like crazy because every single time a message is sent or relayed, this uh, little callback here is going to be firing. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's what this little piece of function here, that's the one of the big reasons why we're overriding this is because we need it. These guys are just useful if we want to have some you know, code, like for instance, when we connect, we could pull the game state currently, or on connecting, we could do that. Or when we disconnect, we could inform everybody that we have disconnected, right? So that's basically what these guys would be used for. So next we're going to need to build our socket manager. Okay. And connection manager and socket manager are kind of confusing. Okay. The socket manager manages multiple sockets and the connection manager manages one socket. So think of it kind of like when I need to manage multiple sockets, I have my, my socket manager, which is mainly like my server. And then my connection manager is more of my client manager. Okay. So basically any of your client information will be done in here. Any of your server information will be done in the other one. Okay. So let's right click, let's create a new file and let's call it steam socket manager. Just like that. And I forgot dot CS because I'm crazy dot CS. There we go. And first we got to get our using. So using steam works, using steamworks.data, using system and using Godot, just like that. And then of course we have to get our actual class. So public class steam socket manager. And that inherits from socket manager. And now we can just start overriding some of our function calls. Now they're pretty much the same as these guys is. So let's just grab all of these. Let's copy them. Let's paste them. And you'll see that it's going to get mad at you and say, well, hold on. You, you, you this, this doesn't work, right? It'll say you're missing some information here. So let's just make some quick adjustments here. First, the connection info info is fine but we need to put our connection in front of it. So connection, connection, okay? And then basically we could just copy this and go ahead and paste and paste. And if I remember correctly on message also paste, there we go. And we can basically just grab connection with that little comma here, paste, 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 and paste and do some formatting before I go jump off a building. And it looks like this one takes something special. So let's go ahead and override it manually. So I'm just gonna undo that so I get my um, 
my IntelliSense and I'll say public override space and on message. And that will basically fill that in for me. And we'll just grab this and paste it just like that and get rid of this. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from got a message to got a socket message because that's different. Um, and then here we can change this from on disconnected to player disconnected. So we'll say quote, player disconnection or player has disconnected. And then we can come in here and say new player connecting. And then here we can say player has connected. There we go. And that will basically do it for our socket manager, at least for a little bit. So really we've done quite a bit of work here. We've built a small connection manager and we built a small socket manager. So now we just need to set up our lobby system and our socket system, and then we can start sending data to each other. So that will be pretty cool. So let's come over to our steam manager here. And we do have a small error here. Well, it definitely exists. So I think it might just be a compiler being funky because it does definitely exist. But what we can do is let's create our lobby. So we'll come in here and we're going to need to tell Steam that we want to create our lobby. And typically we'll just make a new function for this. So we'll say public async task bool create lobby. And I know you might be asking yourself, okay, well, first of all, we have a little square, uh, squiggly line down here. And that's because we don't have system.threading.tasks uh, put in here. Second, you might be seeing this little async. And what does that mean, right? Well, async means that it's going to be running outside of the normal execution thread. It'll be awaited or, you know, sitting off in its own little world not blocking the actual thread of Godot. And we did a lot of that with the previous tutorial as well, where we didn't want to block our thread because if we do that, our game's going to lock up and the user's going to wonder why is our stuff falling apart, right? Why isn't it working? And that's because we need to actually do a lot of work here. So what we'll do is we'll do it async and we're going to return a task bool. Now a task bool is actually a threading system, I guess you could say. It's a asynchronous operation that returns a value. So the nice thing about this is we're saying that if somebody wanted to wait for this and get the result back, they could say, go create a lobby and tell me if it succeeded, basically. And that's kind of what we're doing here is we want to make sure that our stuff succeeds. So we have a asynchronous call that says when it's done, return a Boolean. So that's basically what that means. Now we're gonna wanna wrap this in a try catch. And if you guys have never used a try catch, then you've really have never used C sharp. Try catches are very important for C sharp. In GD script, it's a lot less important because when a try catch happens, it just kind of, if it fails, it fails and it's good to go, right? In GD script, a try catch will fail and it just kind of keeps going, right? In C sharp, if it fails, it'll crash your entire game. So it's good to do risky operations around a try catch. So first we'll type gd, gd dot print creating lobby. And then we need to actually call out to create our lobby. So we'll say var create lobby output is equal to await steam matchmaking dot create lobby async and this is where things get kind of cool so with steam you can actually have up to a hundred people in a single lobby so if you had like a small instance based game where you were doing you know a shooter or something like that you could have up to a hundred people in a single lobby to play their games together now, in our case, we're just going to do 20. 20 is a good number. It's a small game, 10 on 10 style game. 
Um, and I don't think we'll ever get to that amount because I don't think I have 20 friends on my friends list. So I'm not super concerned, but we'll say 20 for right now, but you could put it up to, you know, a hundred or you could put it as low as two if you want to. Now we need to wait for this result. So it's going to await and then it's going to dump this into our create lobby output. And this is returning a awaitable task lobby question mark. So technically, if we wanted to, we could say lobby question mark, and that would be the same thing. And we said in the last tutorial, a, lot, a question mark basically just means it's possible for this not to have a value. It's possible that this might be null. So in order to know if this is a lobby, we need to actually uh, check for that. So if not create lobby output dot has value, then we can just say gd dot print lobby created, but didn't instance correctly. And then we can just go ahead and just throw an exception because we're going to want to bail out of here, or we could return false. If you prefer returning false, it's, it's up to you on which one you'd rather. Cause sometimes you might want to just throw an exception. It's, it's up to you if you just want to, you know, do whatever's down here. Right. So if we've successfully created a lobby and we have a value of that lobby, then we can actually go ahead and say, we're hosting a lobby right? Because we created this lobby, we're hosting it. So we're going to need a global reference to this lobby that we've built, right? So let's come up to the top and let's call it private lobby hosted lobby get semicolon set. You should always use getter and setters if you can. And we'll come back down here and we will set that lobby up right here. Hosted lobby is equal to create lobby output dot value because we now know it has a value. So now we can actually go ahead and set our lobby. Now with our lobbies, we have all sorts of things that we can do here. First, our lobby is private by default. When you create a lobby, it's always private by default. So to make it public, we have to say hosted lobby dot set public, and that will actually set it as public. And then we have to set it as joinable because if it's not joinable, but public, then people can see it, but they just can't join. So we'll say hosted lobby dot set joinable true. And that will set it as joinable. And the nice thing about this is if you wanted to, you could seal a lobby after some users are in there and say, nope, no one's allowed to join this anymore if we want to. Next, we can do some interesting stuff here. So one of the coolest things about this um, lobby system is you have what's called data. And you can basically do filtering based off of data. So for instance, you could say, hosted lobby dot set data like that. And then you can actually set data. So for instance, if you wanted to set it, the, the owner's username, right? So you could say owner name data string, right? And you could put in the player name, right? Now we have a data thing that we can actually filter off of. We could search for a lobby, when we get to that point, we'll be able to search for a lobby based off of this data string. Now you might be asking, okay, who cares, right? I could search off of a data string, right? But what you could do is you could have something like ELO and you could set this to, to a, an ELO number. You could say like, everybody in here must be a ELO of 12 to be able to well, actually has to be a string, but everybody needs to be an ELO of 12 to get in to this level or this lobby. So you could actually uh, create a competitive atmosphere by keeping track of people's ELO and basically just searching for lobbies that have that ELO number. So that's kind of the nice thing. That's kind of the interesting thing that you can, you know, really build for your game. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because I don't need it. 
And I will go ahead and say GD dot print lobby created exclamation point. And then I will return true just like that. And now you remember our try catch here, right? Well, we don't necessarily want to throw because we don't need to throw to, you know, the Godot subsystem because that's going to crash Godot. But what we do need to do is we need to do a little bit more information, right? So first we'll say system exception E. So we have that exception. And second, we're going to need to say GD dot print fail to create lobby. And then we can go ahead and print out our exception. So we'll say plus E dot message, and that will return our exception with whatever message it might have. And that gives us a little bit better idea of what's going on on our end. And we will need to return false to tell everybody above us that our lobby was created um, and failed to be created. And that was kind of why we threw our exception because we wanted to see what the error was and we wanted to see what, um, and we wanted to tell them that the uh, lobby was failed to be created. Now, next, we could technically run this function and it would work, right? But we don't know if it successfully created a multiplayer lobby because we can't really search to see if, if, if lobbies were created, right? So what we can do is we can actually create a function to search and refresh lobbies. So what we'll do is we'll say public async task boolean just like last time get multiplayer lobbies and we will go ahead and do that and just like last time we're going to go ahead and do a try cat just like that and first things first we're going to want to pull back our lobby so we can say lobby and that's going to be a list lobbies is equal to await. If you remember asynchronous, we have to await it. Steam matchmaking dot lobby list dot. And this is us listing our lobbies. Now they do have some additional functions that kind of chain with this. So we'll say with max results of, I don't know, about 10, let's say dot and you can see actually i might as well show you these so they do have a couple of them so filter distance so you can actually distance it based off of how far each person is you can do it based off of off of far you can set the filter distance worldwide you can request the request async which we'll be doing in about two seconds you can also do with key value and that's where things gets cool because you saw how i said set date right here well, that's what that with key value is used for. You could actually say with key value, owner name, data string, player name, and that would actually filter out all of the games that is not that player name. And you can also see with slots available. So you could actually say, I want to make sure that we always have a game that has one slot available for you. So that's kind of some of the options here. So in my case, I said with max results, just because I don't want a bunch of results. And I'm going to get that request async going as well. Now, if you wanted to, you could say with, and if you want, you could also put that uh, open slots one as well, saying that I want to have at least one open slot. But in our case, we'll just stick with this. So next we'll say if lobbies does not equal null, then let's go ahead and loop through those lobbies. So we'll do a for each uh, var item in lobbies. And what we could do is we can print lobby and we will grab our item dot ID and there we go. Now, what we should be doing is we should be keeping track of all the lobbies we have in memory. We don't want to necessarily do a for each and then just have it disappear. So let's go up to the top and let's create a small uh, list of lobbies here. So we'll just grab our lobbies and we'll change this into a list. So we'll say list of lobbies. And instead of saying hosted lobby, let's just say available lobbies. 
available lobbies just like that. And you can see that we don't have our list. So let's go ahead and use system.collections.generic. So that way we have that. And let's just come down here and let's add that lobby. So we'll come in here and we'll say available lobbies dot add, and we will add that item. And that's going to give us the ability to actually have our available lobbies um, available to us. So that way, you know, further up the chain, we could say, go join this specific lobby. Return true. And then if we have any errors during that, we don't necessarily want to throw anything, but we can say gd.print error fetching lobbies, exclamation point. And we will put in that system.exception e, e.message, just like that. Awesome. So that should basically form, and also we have to return false, actually. I missed that part. There we go. So this should form the basis of our lobby system. We can now create a lobby and we can get those lobbies. And then really all we have to do is join a lobby and then we should be pretty much done with our lobby system. But we do need some interface elements and we do need to do a lot of testing to make sure that this even works. So let's go out to Godot here. And let's actually start creating some stuff. So let's right click, add in a child node, and let's add in a control node, just like that. And let's make that control node about, I don't know, I guess full screen would probably be a good idea. So we'll make it full screen, just like that. And then we're gonna right click, add in a child node, let's add in a button, there we go. And we will make it about this big, give or take. And we're going to right click our control node, attach a script, and let's add in a scene manager. So that way we have some kind of manager that works with this specific scene. Customarily, you would name it something special. But in our case, I'm just going to name it scene manager because it's a simple uh, exercise here. So in our scene manager, let's hook this button up to our actual scene manager. So we'll come into our button. We're going to name it create lobby and we will name it create lobby just like that we will duplicate this bring this down we're going to rename this get lobbies and we can copy and paste this there we go and then now we need to hook up our function so we'll click on create lobby we'll go to node We'll grab our button down and we'll copy this little function. We'll connect it to our control node and connect. And then we'll just come down here and say private void and we will paste that. And then we're going to do the same thing with our get lobbies. We'll right click, connect, go to our control node, copy, connect, and we'll say private void paste. There we go. And now we should be ready to start calling our functions. So we know that our um, Steam Manager here, if we look at it real quick, you can see we have Create Lobby and Get Multiplayer Lobbies. So if we go to our Scene Manager, we need a, a reference to our Steam Manager. We already have one right here with our Manager. And it's a static reference, so we can just say Steam Manager dot Manager dot Create Lobby. There we go. And we don't really need to await anything or anything like that. We can just let it fire off. And for our button two, this guy right here, our get lobbies button, we can also fire off steam manager dot manager dot get multiplayer lobbies. There we go. And that should basically work for us. So if we head back to Godot real quick and we save this and we name this as our multiplayer level.tscn, and I guess we could rename this as multiplayer level, might as well make it consistent. And if we hit this little icon, not this icon, if we hit this little icon and hit play, it should play our game. And I think. Godot just crashed, but the game is still running, which is interesting. So I'm going to hit close. And I don't know why Godot just crashed. That's crazy. Hold on one moment. All right, let's go ahead and hit play again and see if it crashes again. 
So we're gonna click Create Lobby. And you'll see it says Creating Lobby, Lobby Created. Created Lobby ID number is equal to a big number. Awesome, that means our stuff actually works. We've created a lobby in Steam's eyes. And if we hit Get Lobbies, you'll see that it did get back our lobby but it also got an error fetching lobbies object reference not set to an instance of an object. So I know what's causing that and that's my fault, but it actually pulled back our lobby right here. So our lobby has been created out on Steam. It's that simple. So that's really cool. So now that we have that, let's get rid of this error here. I already know where it is and that's totally my mistake. So if I open up our steam manager here and i come down to our available lobbies let's just go ahead and make this equal to a new list of lobbies there we go and that will solve that little problem the big reason why we were having that error is because this wasn't instantiated yet and lists have to be instantiated before you actually add things to a list you can't add something to something that doesn't exist now, when you create a lobby, you're actually joining the lobby and there is a actual um, event that gets fired when that happens. So there's actually a signal that gets fired and we actually don't subscribe to that event. That's something that I missed. So let's come down here and add that. So we'll say steam match making dot on lobby entered plus equals on lobby entered call back like that and we'll just grab this guy we'll come down here where we have all the rest of our callbacks and we'll just put that in so we'll say private void on lobby entered callback and it looks like it takes in a lobby friend friend and this will fire whenever anybody enters that lobby so it could be I think I hovered over the wrong one. It looks like it's actually lobby lobby. That's my fault. There we go. And this will fire whenever somebody enters a lobby. So it's only when it doesn't fire when a user enters, it fires when you enter a lobby. Okay. So you have to actually enter a lobby before it can fire that. And what we'll check if we uh, are in a lobby by ourselves or are, or did we join a lobby that other people have joined? And the reason why is because this callback gets fired if we join a lobby or if we join our own lobby, if the host actually joins a lobby. So we want to make sure that we check to see if it's us and we are host or if it's not us. So if lobby.member count is greater than zero. So if we are the only person in here, then we know that we are the lobby owner, right? If it's not that, then we know that we are not the lobby owner. So we can just say gd.print dollar sign you joined lobby.owner.name s lobby and that will basically tell us that we've joined somebody else's lobby okay and that's just basically for us to kind of see what we you know what players are in the lobby now we're going to put a lot of more code here but i don't want to pollute this code too much uh with stuff that's that's future stuff like being able to send chat strings and being able to send, you know, um, like populating our lobbies and so joining socket servers and things like that. So we'll leave it right here for right now, but that's going to allow us to know that we've joined a lobby and we can actually say if we want else GD dot print, you have joined own lobby. And that'll basically allow us to, you know, know that our stuff has been created properly and we've joined our lobbies properly. Now we need to have some kind of actual lobby, right? So we, we need to actually see our lobbies and our characters and our people actually in the lobby, right? 
So let's head over to Godot here and let's actually take a look and build out a bunch of scenes because we're going to need a lot of scenes to uh, build out this basic lobby interface that we're going to be building. So first we will need a small um, VBox container to basically hold on to all of our lobby instances, or at least for our, our, our actual lobbies we have available to us to join. So let's right click our control node and let's add in a child node and add in a VBox container. And let's just call this lobby container like that. And we'll just kind of drag this guy out about here ish. We'll make it about yay big ish. And this is where all of our lobbies are going to be located. Now underneath this, I'm going to right click and add in a child node and add in a control node. And we're going to be adding some lobby elements. So I'm going to name this lobby element, or maybe we could call it something else if you prefer uh, something else, but I'm going to call it a lobby element. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to attach a child node. And I'm going to add in a rich text label, and I'm going to make it about this big. And for the text, I'm just going to throw in some random numbers because that's the ID of the actual lobby. So we'll call this ID. And then I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'm going to pull it over and then I'm just going to give it a name. So I'll say fine point CGI lobby. And that's basically me just giving it a lobby name. Now, of course you don't have to put these texts in here. They're going to get overwritten but I want to have some text there so I can space this out a little bit better. And then I'm gonna rename this as lobby name. And then finally, I'm gonna right click my control node here and I'm gonna add in a child node. I'm gonna add in a button. And this button is basically going to be the join button because when you create lobbies, you need a, the ability to join them, right? So we're going to add that in right there. Now, we can rename this as join button, just like that. And we will need to connect this signal to some kind of script. And we also need to house our lobby element and be able to update this value. So what we'll do is we'll right click our lobby element here, and we will come down here and save this as a scene. And we're going to save this as a lobby element. And now if we head into our lobby element, and we check the size of this object. Let's go and make this a minimum size of something like 23 or 24. And you can see that our join button is slightly too large for our container. So we'll, we'll just kind of button that up so that it just kind of fits. Um, you know, ideally we could, we could use the layout buttons to kind of really make it good, but I'm not exactly particular when it comes to these things, but I guess we could play with it a little bit. You know, we can set this to center right and then maybe pull this back a tiny bit and then pull this guy down like that. I think that will work. Maybe center this a tiny bit more. There we go. And then we can center our ID make this about this big and then let's center left like that. We'll have to pull this over a bit so that they're not butted up as much. There we go. And that's close. It's not quite perfect, but I don't really claim it to be. So I think that will work. And then we'll right click our lobby element. We're going to attach a script and call it lobby element.cs. It's perfectly fine. And we will have a script open right here. Now we're going to need two major functions to do this. First, we're going to need our join button. So let's go uh, back to Godot and let's click on our join button. Let's click on our node and click on our button down. Let's double click that and attach it to our lobby element. We'll make sure to copy this and connect it. And you'll see we have our little um, script here. So we'll come in here and we'll say public void on join button down. And then we can basically join a lobby, but we don't actually have any code to join a lobby or anything like that. But the cool thing is a lobby already has the ability to join. 
So we really only need to set our lobby. So if we come up here, we can get a reference to a lobby, right? So we'll say public lobby, lobby, and we'll pass in a get semicolon set semicolon. And because we don't have our lobby here, we can just click the little light bulb and get Steamworks data. And there we go. Or not. There we go. For some reason, the light bulb wasn't working. But now that we have this, we can basically just set it and we'll be good to go. So we can come down here and just say lobby.join. And that's how you join a lobby. It's really that simple. Now we do need to set our labels. So let's create a function for that. So public void set labels, string ID, string name. And honestly, we could pass in our lobby, lobby, right? Because we don't really need to access this outside of it. So we could just make this private like this. And then when we're setting our lobbies, we can just set that data in, right? So now we need to set our ID. So get node, rich text label. I believe it's called ID. Yep, capital ID. So that's perfect. So ID dot text is equal to ID like that. And then get node rich text label lobby name and we'll make that equal to name just in case we want a custom name now what we could do if we wanted to is we, i believe we could just do lobby dot and i think we might have a name in here actually i don't think we do that would have to be a custom data parameter so we'll just pass in the name instead and then finally we can set our lobby equal to our lobby underlining here so we can just say self this dot lobby and that will fix that now we do have an issue here because i forgot text because i'm dumb and that should about do it for us so basically we now have a lobby element that allows us to join our lobbies as long as we uh, set this and instance our lobby element properly so now we just have to actually instance our lobbies so if we head back to Godot here, we can basically just come in here, save our lobby element, come to our multiplayer level and get rid of this little guy here. So we will delete this. And then we basically just have to instance this, these lobby elements and in our refresh code. So you can see that we're getting our multiplayer lobbies. And since this is a non-awaited function it's just going to fire it off and forget about it right it's going to say i don't i don't really care okay what happens to this function and that's totally fine for this case but we do need to know when the multiplayer lobbies have refresh and that is where signals come in that's where we can actually start to build our own signal so if we head over to our steam manager which is right here and we come up to the top, let's create a signal. And our signals are basically a way for us to be able to basically run a signal like GD script. So we can basically just come in here and say public static. And the reason why I'm using this static is because I only want one in the entire project. You could make it not static and then you wouldn't have to worry about this, but I wanna make it static. So public static event action uh, brace pointer. And then we have to pass in something we want to return. So in our case, we'll do a list of lobbies like that. And then we have to name our signal, our event. So we'll call this on lobby refresh completed okay and that'll basically build our event now we need to call that event and we need to actually fire this event off and have it invoke okay and that's the term that we want to use is invoke 
So if we head down to our get lobbies code, which is down here, after we've gotten all of our lobbies and we've added them to our available lobbies, we'll come down here and we'll just invoke that. So on lobby refresh completed dot invoke. And we need to pass in our list of lobbies. So we can just pass in our available lobbies like that. And that will pass in our available lobbies to our event. So everybody that's listening to this little event or this little um, signal is going to catch this uh, event. So now we have this, we can actually go to our scene manager and up here we can just say steam manager dot on lobby refresh completed plus equals on lobby refresh completed callback. And then we could just create that function. So we can come down here and say private void on lobby refresh completed callback. And we'll take in that little list of lobbies like that. And we'll call it lobbies. There we go. Now you'll see that we don't have um, our using systems.collections.generic. So we'll put that in, which once again, for some reason didn't work. So using system collections.generic. There we go. And that will solve that problem. And we also don't have the namespace for lobbies. Now I'm curious if it works. Nope, it didn't take Steamworks data either. So we'll say using steamworks.data. For some reason, it just doesn't work for me. And there we are. Now we can come in here and we can basically tell our uh, scene manager to instance all of our stuff. So we can just say for each var item in lobbies, every element that we have, we can spawn in an element. So we'll need to instance an element. And to do that, we're gonna need a packed scene, right? Whenever you wanna instance something, you have to have a packed scene or else it doesn't really work. I mean, you can load it with a resource, a resource as a packed scene and then do that. But to me, it's a little easier to hook it up in the editor. So we'll come up here and we'll just add in that packed scene. So public packed scene, lobby element like that and we need to export it out so that way it can be seen in the editor so we will export it out now when we come down here we can just instance that lobby element and use it as a normal element so var element is equal to lobby element dot instance as lobby element like that and then we need to set our labels. So element dot set label like that. And we need to pass in our ID item dot ID comma. And we need to get a name. Now we actually do have a name, right? Which is the owner, uh, get data string. Remember we, we set that as our, um, lob as our owner of our lobby. So we can just grab that. So we'll put item dot get data quote owner data name i think i called it owner data name string let me see owner data name string i did okay so owner data name string and then we can just say plus quote lobby like that there we go and then we can hit comma and pass in our lobby so we'll just pass an item and now we can just add to our uh, lobby container here that object as a child. So we can just say get node vbox container. And I believe it's directly under our control node. So we'll just grab the name and paste it dot add child element. And there we go. So that should in theory spawn all of our lobbies that exist. 
And once we test this, you if it works, you will see that we do have a small bug and we can we can uh, burn that bridge when we get there, right? Um, you will also notice that we have an error here and that's because this is a Steamworks ID, not an actual uh, string. It's an actual uint, it's a, it's a specific object. It's actually a Steam ID. So we'll pass that as a dot to string to convert it over to a string. So let's test this and see if this all actually works. So if we hit play, hopefully if we cross our fingers, it actually it's not going to work. I close this because I forgot underneath our control node, we need to set our lobby element. So let's drag our lobby element into here and then let's test this. So we'll hit play and we'll hit get lobbies. Okay, so it looks like it deleted our lobby. So you have, I had to create a lobby so that way we could actually, you know, see our lobby. But you can see, here's our lobby. If I get lobby again, you'll see that I have multiple lobbies and that's totally fine because I created multiple lobbies. But you can see, there we go. We have uh, multiples of the same lobby because we're not clearing our list, but we do have a lobby. And if we click join, you'll see you joined Finepoint CGI's lobby. Simple enough, right? So basically at this point, other than of course, fixing this little, um, you know, lettering issue, this little duplication issue, really we have our stuff working. So I think our next step is for me to grab my laptop, pull all this code over, run it, and see if we can have multiple people in the same lobby. All right, I have my other laptop here and you can see that I have the project on the other laptop and everything should be ready to go. So we will hit play. And you can also see, by the way, I am logged in as a separate account. This is another Finepoint CGI account that I've created. It's not the same account, so do note that that exists. And I am friends, of course, with myself, Finepoint CGI, so that way I actually have, you know, access to myself. So if we hit play and we bring up the Steamworks tutorial and we attempt to authenticate, you will notice that there is a slight issue with getting the game to run. You'll see that there's not really much of an error. If we hit create lobby, nothing really seems to happen and everything just seems kind of broken. As a matter of fact, even if we fire off our normal project here, you will see that we don't get really anything. Steam doesn't really tell us anything and it's, it's basically dead. Now, the reason why is because my account doesn't actually exist as a part of my project, okay? So when you actually build out these projects and you actually have Steamworks, you need to be a part of basically a testing group. And if you're not a testing group, if you're not a part of a testing group, then your entire project is just not going to work for you. So keep that in mind when you're working with your friends. So how can we actually add our Steam account to our project? Well, if we open up our Steamworks tutorial here and we head over to app admin right here, we click on that. And it's going to ask me to sign in. So let me sign in and I will be right back. And you will see that I'm at my Steamworks tutorial main page. So just make sure you get to this page and then let's scroll down a tiny bit. And there should be a section somewhere in here. And I'm very bad at finding it's right here, manage users and permissions. So if we click on that and we head over to our add and manage users section, you'll see that we have a list of people. And of course I have all of these guys blocked. So you guys can't see their information, but these are people that have actual access to my project. Now, if we come up here to invite user, you can click on that and you'll see that you have an entire thing to fill out. So you can see, we need to put in our user's full name, our email, our confirmed email, and any internal notes. So their user's full name is find 
And in this case, I'm going to put fine point CGI, although you, of course, can put your full name of the person so that way you can recognize who they are. For a user's email address, you want to make sure that it's their actual email address that they signed up with their Steam account. So in my case, it's finepointcgi at gmail.com, which is my uh, contact email. And I will paste that in. And any other internal notes, things like that, it's not necessary. You can take a look at any of these options. Most of these things are stuff that you don't really need them to have, but stuff like view error data might be useful. You know, being able to check out like metadata or something like that might be useful, but really you don't need to give them access to any of this, okay? But once we're done with giving them access, what we can do is just click invite user and it's gonna send out an invite to that user. Now, if I go to my email, you will see that I have an email here. Now I've blocked out a lot of it because it has my full name in it because the organization that this is under is it's under my full name because uh, Steam requires you to have an actual liability company if you want it to be not released under your personal name. So in my case, it has my personal, my full name, as a matter of fact, uh, in here. So what we'll do is click accept this invitation. And then if we click accept, it will say, hey, you've accepted, okay? Now, the person after they accept, it needs to be um, verified by you, the administrator. The person that can run all of this needs to actually verify that yes, we are allowing this person to have access. So I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna log out of here and I'm going to log into my actual account. So I will be right back. All right, we're gonna come down here, click on Steamworks tutorial. We will scroll down to where our manage users and permissions and add manage users. And you will see here that we have a invite awaiting confirmation. So you have the inviting account, which is in my case, my account. And of course it's blurred. Then you have email, real name, and then any notes or things like that. So we can click approve and then add to groups. And that's going to add that user to this application and they will be ready to use this application. So now if we head back to our Steamworks tutorial and refresh that, in theory, if everything's been done correctly, you should see that you can now connect to Steamworks. And there we go. You can see access Steam community while playing. Awesome. So now we have everything hooked up properly. So let's click the close button, hit the play icon right here with this scene. And we can actually test our project. So I know it was a little bit of a detour, but unfortunately it has to be done. So let's click play. Let's go and create a lobby just like that, and then click get lobbies. And you will see that fine point CGI's lobbies right here. We will click join and you will see user has joined lobby fine point CGI. Now, technically speaking, I probably should have changed my uh, user on my steam to not be fine point CGI, but you at least can see that yes, we can communicate with each other. So that's amazing. And it's, great how simple this is i know that this has been like an hour or so worth of worth of like a tutorial basically but in an hour we've we have an entire lobby system basically built so that's really the power of the steam backbone now the next big question is how do i invite my friends you know i have a friend his name's fine point cgi and i want to invite him to my game well how we can do that is actually pretty simple First, we're going to duplicate our button here. We'll pull this guy down and then we'll come over here and change this from get lobbies to invite friend like that. I'm gonna change this name over to invite friend as well. Just like that. We'll come to our node, right click, disconnect it, right click, connect and connect it to our control node and hit connect. Now. We'll need to make our function. So private void and drop that in 
like that. And we need to be able to create a invite for our friend. Now we're going to do this mainly in the steam manager. So if we head over to our steam manager and we come over here and let's just minimize a few of these guys just to make it a little easier for us to see if we want to drop in our function here, we can go ahead and do that. Now our function is going to be called public void open friend overlay or invite. And what we'll do is we'll just call our steam friends dot open invite overlay. And we can actually pass in our lobby ID. So if we're in a lobby, we need to have an ID to invite our friend with. So we can just pass in our current lobby ID, which it's been about a day and I forgot which lobby is hosted lobby hosted lobby dot ID. And that's basically all we have to do. Now we should come in here and put hosted lobby is equal to lobby. That way I can keep track of what lobbies I have, you know, what lobbies I'm in or things like that. Because one thing that we're going to run into is if the user, if I join a lobby and I want to invite my friend to that lobby, I can't because I, my current lobby is null, right? So we need to be able to set that right here, which this probably should be changed to current lobby instead of hosted lobby, but we can burn that bridge when we get there. So and if we come over to our scene manager, we can call our steam manager dot manager dot open friend overlay for invite like that. And we will save it. Now this will just create the actual uh, overlay and we'll send the invite, but we need to be able to handle that invite. Right. So we need to be able to say, Hey, uh, when an invite comes in and you say, yeah, I want to join, you need to be able to join that lobby if that makes sense. So let's come up here and let's actually add in a small callback for that. And they actually have a callback that's already pre-built for that called on game lobby join request. So if we come into our ready, we type steam friends dot on game lobby join request plus equals and then we can just copy and paste this and type call back just like that we'll copy this guy come back down here and i'll just put it right next to this open friend overlay for invite that way it just kind of organizes pretty well because these two elements kind of work together so we'll type public void on lobby game request callback and actually we could probably make this private now that i'm thinking about it and it takes in two things it takes in a steam id and a a lobby and a steam id so we'll pass in lobby lobby comma steam id id and then we can basically go ahead and join our lobby. So first we have to say room enter join successful is equal to await, which means this needs to be async. And you'll see that Visual Studio is smart enough to know that this needs to be async. So it automatically did that for us, which is really cool. Lobby dot join. And that will have us join that lobby. Now we need to make sure that we check if it's successful. So if join successful does not equal room enter dot success, because if it doesn't, then we got to do some error handling, right? We need to at least notify the user. So we can just say gd dot print fail to join lobby. And if we did successfully join the lobby, let's set our current lobby, which in this case is hosted lobby is equal to our lobby. That's pretty much all we need to do. Now, normally when you join a lobby, you're going to want to say, Hey, I've joined the lobby and you'll need to show like a user element. And like I said, we can do that in a moment. 
but this should in theory work. So I'm going to uh, copy this code over to my other machine and I will get this going for you guys. So hold on one moment. All right. Now, if we hit create lobby and invite friend, you'll notice that nothing happens. And I think that's my fault. Let me check something real quick. Yeah, I forgot to I forgot to hook up the function, so it's not gonna call it if it's not hooked up. So let's do that real quick. So Steam Manager dot Manager dot. Oh, I believe the function was called Open Friend Overlay for Invite. So we'll do that. There we are, and then let's hit play and come over here and create a lobby, invite a friend. And you'll see we get this really cool overlay and then we'll click invite and then we'll hit close and you'll see over here i have an invite so if i hit shift tab and i click play game in theory i should have there we go i've joined the lobby you can see right here it's really hard because of this overlay because for some reason steam likes to be difficult with godot don't ask me why but you can see a user has joined the lobby. So now I can invite my friends and they can play along with me. So that's great. So next we need to set up our leaving a lobby and we need to set up our lobby uh, interface, right? Being able to actually see the users that are currently in here. And maybe we should probably put some kind of ready status, right? and we can talk about how to pass data back and forth. Now, in order for us to show our users in our lobby, we need to actually create these users. So we'll close our game real quick and let's create another container here that we can just go ahead and duplicate. So we'll just grab this guy, throw it down here maybe, and we can put our lobby uh users in here so we'll say lobby users there we are and in here we can just right click add in a child node let's add in a control node and much like the last time we did this we basically just need to create an element that has our you our users information now really all we need is just you know, their name and whether or not they are ready. So if we right click our control node, add in a child node, add in a rich text label, let's make it about this big and just type some words in there, some random letters. And then let's basically just duplicate this, pull it over and let's just type ready or not ready. And in our case, I think we'll start with not ready. That way the users are not ready until they, they say they are ready. And then we will click on our control node and we will force the size up just a little bit, make it about that big, give or take. And I think that will do it for us. Cause if we just duplicate this, well, I don't think that, oh, I forgot to do it on min size. So let's bring this up to about this big, give or take 17, 18, I think will be good. It's a good round number. And if we duplicate this, you'll see that they kind of flow on top of each other. So I think that will work. And then let's just grab this. Let's name it lobby player like that. And then let's take this guy, right click it, save branch as seen, and let's just save it as lobby player.tscn. And then we can go ahead and remove this. Now we do need to have some kind of button because if we're going to have a lobby, we might as well allow the users to actually, you know, say I'm ready, right? Now the way that they can do that is we'll just add in a little ready button down here. So let's right click, add a child node, let's add in a button and let's drag it down here at the bottom right hand corner. And we'll move this guy over here, make it a little on the bigger side. There we go and we can just say ready. Now we'll hook up this button in a little bit, but at least we have it and, and we're, you know, prepping this beforehand. So we'll type lobby button. So if we come back to our scene manager and we open this guy up, when somebody joins, we're going to want to basically say, hey, somebody's joined, 
right? And we want to instance our lobby. We want to set our lobby elements. We want to do all of that stuff, right? So what we can do, and actually I think we might want to do this on the Steam side first. Let me think. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do it on the Steam side first. So we'll come over to Steam Manager. Let's come up here and let's create a signal. So the way this is going to work is basically we're going to create a signal that whenever a user joins, we can just say, hey, a user has joined, right? So we'll need to create two actions here. And I'm basically just going to duplicate these two. And I'm going to add in and I'm going to basically have one action for when someone leaves and for when someone joins. So we'll say on player join lobby and on player leave or left lobby. I think left is probably better. And now for action, let's just pass in the friend that has left. So the way Steam works is all of the people that are in your lobby is considered your friend. And basically that houses all of their user information, more or less. Now that we have one of these signals here, we can actually, or an event, I guess, would be probably a better term for it. Now that we have an event, we can actually fire it off when a user leaves or joins a lobby. So if we come down here and we look for when a user has disconnected, you can say on player left lobby and pass it friend. And that will basically notify our system that, hey, somebody has left. Now we have a callback here, so we can do the same thing like that. And then when a user joins, we can basically fire off a join event. So on player join lobby like that. And I think, let's see this. We're forcing us to join host is equal to lobby. I don't think we're actually forcing ourselves to join a lobby. When we join our own lobby, let me check the logs real quick. And user has joined the lobby. So I think that will work because user has joined the lobby. So we should be good to go. So what we'll do is we will come over to our scene manager. We're going to subscribe to that event. So steam manager dot on player join lobby plus equals on lobby join call player join lobby call back and of course you don't have to have callback but i just like to have it and then we'll just paste that guy in there and then say on player left lobby and then on player left lobby callback there we go and we can come down here and set up our on player left and on player joined and now this is where things are going to get fun right so we're going to have to do a lot of coding here to kind of build out this little section so so first we'll do when a player has joined so on player joined callback we'll say private void on player joined callback and we need to pass in a friend because that's what we are required to put in and you'll see that we don't have access to friends so we're going to need to add in our using statement so using steamworks and now what we have to do is we have to actually get a reference to our lobby player so if we head up to the top we'll get it we'll basically copy this export here which will speed up our development a little bit and we'll just call this lobby player like that we can come down here after we copy that and basically just say var element is equal to lobby player dot instance as lobby player like that we need to basically make our lobby player a actual um object right because much like how we did this with the lobby element we need to have some things that we need to set right whether or not they're ready whether or not their name we need to set a lot of little bits of information so if we head back here to Godot and we open up our lobby player right here. We right click it and attach a script and let's just call it lobby player.cs. And also we should probably come in here and name these guys. That'll make things a little easier. So we'll come in here and type username and we will type in ready. And that should work for us. So if we head back to our lobby player.cs, 
we can create a couple of functions much like we did before. So we can come in here and just say public void set player info, and we'll pass in a string player, and then we can just pass in our um, data. So we can just say get node rich text label, and we can pass in our rich text label, which in our case is username. We can paste that in dot text is equal to player. Now this will basically just set our players information, right? Their ready status is defaulting to not ready. So we're good to go there. Now we do need a, an ability to set their ready status. So let's put that in. So public void set ready status. We'll pass in a Boolean of status. And we could say if status, and we probably should have changed this to ready. So let's make that make more sense by putting in ready. There we go. So if they are ready, then we can get node rich text label ready. I believe that's what we called it. Yep. That's what we called it. Dot text is equal to quote ready else. If it's not ready, then we already know it's not ready. So we can basically just grab this guy and set it to not ready like that. And that's pretty much all we need to do for our lobby player. So if we go back to our scene manager here, we come down here to where we are instancing our guy. We can say as lobby player, and then we can actually start, you know, setting our information. So we can come in here and type element and I misspelled element. So let's add that N so I don't get yelled at dot name is equal to friend dot. And this is where things get interesting. So you can actually pull a lot of stuff. So you could pull like their account ID. You could pull their name. You could actually come in here, just type name. And there you go. If you want to use their names or you could use their account IDs, it's up to you on whatever you'd like to do. In my case, I'm going to use their, their, um, account ID. I think that'll be a bit more unique. And what we're doing here is we are actually setting their uh, object name in Godot equal to their account ID. And the reason why this is important is because we now can single out a specific person in our project. Okay. So if we have a person who uh, has joined our lobby and we want to send them an ex a direct message, we can find their node just by their element name. So that's kind of the reason it's a unique thing that I can identify a person as if that makes sense. So now we can come in here and type element dot set player info, and we'll pass in our friend dot name, and that should pass in their name. Next, we'll need to put our object under our VBox container, much like how we did right here. So get node V box container. And our VBox container in this case is named, if we go back to our multiplayer level, I believe it's called Lobby Users, and that's a good enough name for what it's worth. And we will paste that in, dot add child, and we'll add in our element just like that. And now we can go ahead and remove our players as well. So we'll come in here, private, I always wanna make it public, void, on player left lobby, let's pass in a friend, friend, and let's go ahead and drop this guy in here. Now, when we player leaves a lobby, we want to be able to pull out our um, reference to that player, right? So let's go grab our node. So we can say get node, and in our case, it's a lobby player, and we can go fetch that player. Now I'm going to put a dollar sign up here so I can concatenate my strings. And I'm going to go to lobby users like this, and I'm going to comma backslash. And this is where things get kind of cool. So we can fetch our player information just by calling their ID. So we can say friend dot 
ID dot account ID dot to string, and that will guarantee that we have our player and we have the proper player. And then we can type dot Q free, and there you go. And that's how simple it is to basically add or remove players to our uh, lobby. Now, if we hit play and we actually play our game, hopefully, if I can get my stuff all working, this should hopefully work. Now, we're not going to see it on our um, other screen here. You'll only see it on the main screen, the normal one that I use for recording. And that's because I haven't really updated that one. But I will create a lobby. I will get lobbies. I will join this lobby. And unfortunately, nothing has happened. So that's not a good sign. So let's take a look, see what is going on. I got the late uh, user has joined, so that's good. Actually, let me see if I create a lobby. I get lobbies. I join the lobby. User has joined. Let's see if I go to remote. Do I see my... No, I do not. So it looks like we're not even getting our uh, players underneath this little guy here. So that's not a good sign. So let's take a look at our scene manager. So when player has joined lobby packed scene, we didn't set our pack scene, but normally that would crash. So let me put this in our thing right here and let's let's put this into our lobby player and then let's hit play and see if that fixes it. I don't know if it's going to, so we will create a lobby. We will join a lobby and you can see fine point CGI, but I am missing myself. So that's not cool. So I can actually join multiple times over on my, my other side, my laptop. So you can see I can join as many times as I want, but you can see that our um, host is not showing up here, but our player is. So that's cool. At least we know it's working now. What that means is if our host isn't showing up, then somewhere in our code, we are not setting it to actually call that uh, event. So if we head over to our Steam manager, we take a look at it real quick. So we create a lobby. Let's see, create a lobby. We're creating a lobby. Lobby has been created. And then user has joined on player join. Let's see. Creating lobby, lobby created, created lobby, blah, blah, blah. You joined Fine Point CGI's lobby, but it didn't actually fire off the user joined. So what we'll probably need to do is we will probably need to fire off on player joined when the user gets, uh, creates a lobby because I've created a lobby. I'm going to be joining that said lobby. So that should work. And we can pass in ourselves. So what our friend ID is and how we can fix this issue is basically by looping through when we enter a lobby, looping through what players are in the lobby. Since we're already in the lobby, it should in theory come back with us, right? So we can come in here and say, okay, our hosted lobby is equal to lobby, right? Cause we're setting our own lobby and we can actually come in here and just say for each var item in lobby dot members and we can fire off our join so on player join lobby and we can pass in our item which happens to be our friend and while we're here when we join our lobby there's a section in here where we actually do a on lobby join request right because we're going and joining a friend request we need to actually do that again down here to make sure that we, of course, get that information. So we can pull that in and just say, hey, loop through, get everybody and make sure that we are good to go. And in theory, if everything's been done correctly, if we hit play like this, I shouldn't even need to uh, uh, join a lobby. I could just create a lobby and I should show up. 
Now, if I get the lobbies, which I should probably close my game and refresh it real quick on the uh, client side or on the other side, I should say. And then if I get my lobbies and I join my lobby, you can see now I have both guys. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So now we need to talk about how to transfer data between each other. And this is where things are going to get real spicy. And we're probably going to be sitting here talking for uh, probably about an hour. So get a cup of coffee, pause and come back when you're ready. Cause this is going to take a second. Hey guys, editor Mitch here. So the next segment here is going to be like an hour and a half to possibly two hours. So I'm going to cut right here. This seems like a good stopping point. So uh, I'll be uploading the next video tomorrow at my usual time. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Hey, if you dislike this video, go hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video uh, series at this point was a viewer suggested video series. So if you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it and add it to my Trello board. Link to that is in the description. And hey, if you have any questions or comments or any issues, please hit me up in Discord or down in the uh, comments and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. You know, I'm always here to help you guys. So just let me know. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I will see you all next time. Thanks.